Hi there, and welcome to Plains Evangelical Church, Church Online. Glad you can join with us as we share God's Word with you. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16, and we'll be concluding the series on Jesus and religion in Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through to verse 12. If you haven't got a Bible and you would like one so that you can read God's Word for yourself, please get in touch with us, Pastor at plainsevangelicalchurch.com and that's the email address that you can send all your questions and comments to. So let's read God's Word. Matthew chapter 16 verses 1 to 12. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to test him, to test Jesus, and to ask them to show him, them a sign from heaven. He answered them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather. For the sky is red, and in the morning it will be stormy today, because the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left, and so he left them and departed. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. But Jesus, aware of this, says, O oh, you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not perceive, do you not remember the five loaves? And the five for the five thousand, and how many baskets were gathered? Or the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets were gathered? How is it that you fail to understand that I did not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Amen. Let me just pray and ask God to help us understand his word for us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us your words. We thank you that you speak to us today, that you have not set us on this earth to run it alone, but you want to enter into a relationship with us, that you want to reveal yourself to us. And so, Lord, we pray that you will open up our hearts and eyes and ears to hear your word and see it for ourselves today. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. According to the NHS, in the UK today, there are 2 million people who have some form of sight impairment and 360,000 people who are registered partially sighted or entirely blind. Your sight is an important thing and it's often something that you take for granted until you're faced with some form of impairment or loss. And what is true in the physical world is also true in the spiritual world. Unlike the physical, however, where we start off, often start off with good vision uh, and then as time goes on it deteriorates, in the spiritual, our default position, our starting position, is blindness. Spiritual blindness is an inability to see how to have a relationship with God. To live the way that God created us and how to get to heaven where and where we will spend eternity. The Bible says that the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might see not the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. You see the question for us is do we act in ignorance of our blindness? Do we or do we desire to see and pursue a biblical path to do so, that is a relationship with Jesus? Or do we see and pursue false paths created by religion? The latter is what we see in our story today through the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now this is the fifth message, it's the final message in Matthew's Gospel in the series that have entitled Jesus and Religion. And in this final passage we have four verses, the first four verses, that bring out four observations that religion does to our sight. Then the second eight verses bring out four 
observations and relationship with Jesus does to our sight. So let's begin by looking at the four observations of religion. The first one is religion makes you blind. A number of years ago, I was at a camp in central Scotland and we went on a walk along the edge of the Queen Elizabeth Forest. Lovely walk if you've ever done it. Uh, And this was how we were to get back to the camp centre. It was only supposed to be about an hour long. And as we chatted along the way, we we lost track of time. We never realised that we'd taken a wrong turning and we're actually heading into the middle of the forest rather than round the outside of it. We were unaware that we'd gone the wrong way until five hours had passed. There's something worse than being lost, and that is being lost and not even knowing knowing that you are lost. See, that's, that's the issue with religion, with our actions, with our things in our lives that we think has got us right with God. Our sin, it makes us blind to God's way. Even when we put religion on top of we think we're going the right way, we're actually still as blind as we were when we just ignored it. And this was the case with the Pharisees and the Sadducees who came to Jesus. Both of them thought that their religion was right. Now these two groups were poles apart from each other in the Jewish religious spectrum. They were both Jews but had very different beliefs on how to interpret the Jewish law. The Pharisees, they were the fundamentalists and so when they read the law everything was taken literally every letter and every word of the law was applied literally and they were so paranoid that they would break the law that what they did was they created a whole fence of more laws to prevent them from even getting close eh, to being on that fine line of breaking law and, and keeping the law in other words if they had lived today and they drove through a 30 mile an hour area they would drive at 20 miles an hour so they knew that they were they would never drift into that 31 breaking the law limit. The Sadducees, on the other hand, they were the liberals of the day. They ignored the fences of the Pharisees, they jumped over the fences, and they tried to see how close they could get to the law without breaking it. They lived in that very fine line. And so they would be the ones that would drive right on the dot of 30 miles an hour If they had cruise control, they would set it at 30 miles an hour. And inevitably, sometimes they drifted into crossing that line and breaking the law. Now, Christ hasn't called us to live like these two groups. He hasn't called us to be like the overcautious Pharisees. But he also doesn't want us to ride that fine line of the Sadducees. So when it comes to reading scripture for ourselves, yes, we need to be cautious, but not overcautious. And this requires a little bit of wisdom. So whenever we come to God's word, we should first take it in context. When was it written? Who was it written to? And then we should look out, we shouldn't look out for get out clauses so that we could see, well, how can I obey God but still have a little bit of fun with my sin? Religion will always blind us to the truth of scripture it will always cause us to do both of these approaches. But only a relationship will open our eyes to truth beyond religion. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they both thought that their methods were right. But as they practiced them and they taught them to other people, they forgot the truth of God. They became more focused on keeping rules rather than having a relationship. So not only were they walking the wrong way, but in addition to that, they also opposed the right way. And that's the second thing that religion does. Religion opposes sight. When we finally realised that we were lost in the middle of the Queen Elizabeth Forest, we knew we were lost. The only option was to phone for help. Now, the religious leaders, they didn't come to Jesus for his help, like we read in the previous story of the feeding of the 4,000. They came to Jesus, were told, to test him, to ask him to show them a sign. Now, this is not the actions of a seeking people. They didn't want to know that so that they could learn more about Jesus. This is the actions, rather, of a hard-hearted people who are attempting to discredit the truth and justify their own sin and their own religion. 
even if Jesus did show them a sign, which we actually read as time goes on, he did, that they would still remain hard-hearted because they were too focused on religion and sin, not the truth that was to be found in Jesus. The fact of the matter is, Jesus never needed to perform a sign because Jesus himself was the sign. His birth was fulfilled it fulfilled, his birth fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies that were spoken about his coming. He was performing miracles to glorify God like no one else on earth. His teaching was attracting people from all walks of life to turn in repentance. They couldn't see the wood from the trees. They couldn't see the Messiah from the religion. The Pharisees, they produced man-made laws that block Jesus out. The Sadducees, they were looking too busy looking for loopholes so that they could sin. Both ways were wrong, because neither way included Jesus. It's good to live above reproach like the Pharisees did, but when we live but only when we live like Jesus. It's good to find a balance between life and law, but only if life is Jesus. If we live like the Pharisees, then often we'll miss the bigger picture. If we live like the Sadducees, then we'll be driven by our desire to sin, not to serve God, not to be in a relationship with God. But if we live like Jesus, then we will know righteousness that comes through him. We will know freedom and salvation that comes through him. The next thing that religion does is religion deteriorates your sight. Now, if you're already blind, it seems a bit of a strange thing to say that your sight can deteriorate. But with spiritual blindness, our vision deteriorates as we move further and further and further from the solution. When we finally realised that we were lost in the forest, we were past the point of being able to return. Five hours was a very long way to turn back. I think it was probably early evening by this time. So we knew that... Uh, it really wasn't an option there. And even if we did have that as an option, we didn't know where we turned the wrong way in the first place. So chances are we would have probably got lost even further. The further we walked the wrong way, the more difficult it became for us to get back to the right way. Sin deteriorates our spiritual blindness. The more people we hurt because of sin, the more reconciliation we have to do to reverse the effects. The more debts we get into, the more we have to repay. What may well have started off as a little thing, like a little lie to cover up sin, can end up something far more severe. We see that in the example in the Old Testament of King David. King David, he never went to work one day. You ever done that? You ever pulled a sickie? Well, King David pulled a sickie. Now, that might not seem like a very severe thing to do. But that choice ended up in him lusting after a married woman and him committing adultery with him, and him lying to try and cover it all up, and finally in him murdering his her husband. So for some, the road to spiritual sight that's found through a relationship with Jesus, it's a long one, because the gods of this world have taken them so far from the point of restoration. And the longer we continue on that path of sin, the more painful it becomes. Even if we do find our rest restoration with Jesus, we still need to reconcile those broken relationships with those who we have sinned against. And we still have to live with potential consequences of our sinful actions. Think about the story of Zacchaeus in the New Testament. Zacchaeus had to pay back, for, or decided to pay back, four times what he had cheated. Now imagine if he delayed in trusting Jesus that little bit longer. He may well have had to repay five times, six times, seven times. If you are not living, if you are living against God in any way today, whether you're a Christian or not, then you need to stop, repent and get back onto that right path before it gets any worse or even worse before it gets to the point of no return, which is the last thing that we know that we learn from religion. Religion destroys any chance of regaining sight. The incident with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, 
ends in verse 4 with Jesus leaving them before they had a chance to argue with him anymore. God always has the final word. Our eventful walk in the forest eventually ended with one of our leaders driving the minibus down the forest track into the point that we were uh, and to take us home. We had a phone to phone him. We had a leader to come and do it. And he had a bus to come and collect us. See, the problem is with the people like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they don't realise that they have a leader in Christ Jesus. They think that they know it all. They don't pick up that phone of prayer and call out to God in repentance. They don't depend on the bus that is the Saviour Christ Jesus. They were given a sign by Jesus. He referred back to an Old Testament story, the one of Jonah and the fish. And earlier on in Matthew, we read the fact that that was a sign of how just as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, so Jesus would be in the depths of the earth and the grave for three days and three nights. But after that, just like Jonah was restored by God, so Jesus would be restored back to life. That was the restoring relationship that Jesus was to bring. That was the sign that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were looking for, but they didn't accept it. They were lost in the proverbial forest for good. The Bible says that some will blind themselves to the truth of Jesus to the extent at which God pulls the shutters down for good. He hardens their heart. The Bible uses that phrase. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 10 says that he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that they can neither see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts nor turn and I would heal them. It's not that God doesn't want to heal them. It's that God knows that with their hard hearts they will refuse the rescue that he will bring for them in Christ Jesus. Whilst we live on this earth, no matter how blind we are, we are never too far from the truth of the gospel. There is a window of grace that God has given to us. There is a proverbial minibus in the forest. But there will come a day when that window will be closed. There will come a day when it is too late. Where we will stand before God and we will look for access into his eternal kingdom and he will repeat those really scary words in scripture. I never knew you. There's an urgency in the gospel of salvation. It's time sensitive. You never know when your last chance is going to be to fix those mistakes that you've made. To allow Jesus to pull you back onto the right path. It's a blessing and it will last forever, but only if you're in a relationship with Jesus. So what's the alternative to religion? Well, it's exactly that. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so the first thing that we see about relationship is, relationship, it gives us sight. Now, we often read the stories of the gospel and we think of the disciples as being Jesus' groupies who follow him around, come what may. Well, in the story of Judas Iscariot, we know that's not the case. Even in somebody really amazing like Peter, he still denied Jesus. The fact is, they were still learners. They faced many difficult struggles during their three years with Jesus. In fact, we've already had one incident that's recorded in John chapter 6, verse 66, of a group of disciples leaving Jesus when he challenges them about counting the cost of following him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were the Jewish celebrities. They were the ones that every good Jew aspired to be like. And after their encounter with Jesus, the disciples had to make a choice. They had to think, do we want to follow the crowds and follow the Pharisees and the Sadducees back to Jerusalem into the big important schools of training? Or do they want to follow Jesus into the unknown? You see, even as Christians, we are faced with similar choices each day. Choices to follow Jesus or choices to follow the world. The problem is that often we don't consider Jesus' way and our sinful hard hearts get the better of us. 
but in the same way that Jesus opened up our eyes so that we might enter into a relationship with him, so too is he opening up our eyes like he did with the disciples in the choices that we make on how to follow him. If we're not making Jesus part of our life's decisions, then we need to stop for, ask ourselves, firstly, are we in a relationship with him? And if we are, have we neglected that relationship with him? Jesus gave the disciples sight so that he was the own that sight revealing that he was the only way. And the disciples continued on their journey to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. When we are faced with those choices, do we choose Jesus' way or the world's way? Secondly, it stands to reason that if relationship gives us sight, then relationship also opposes blindness. In a relationship with Jesus, there's no middle ground. If the disciples were given sight to see Jesus' way, then they in turn opposed the blindness of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. A relationship with Jesus, it begins and is sustained with repentance. Turning your back on sin, turning your face towards Jesus. If you're in a relationship with Jesus, then you oppose sin. You cannot say you have a relationship with Jesus whilst actively desiring to live a sinful way. The same rules apply to your relationship with Jesus as applies to your spouse if you're married. You cannot have a marriage relationship with your spouse and someone else at the same time. The Bible often compares sin to adultery. It does so in our passage here in Matthew chapter 16. It's having an affair with the world whilst claiming to be in a relationship with Jesus. A relationship with Jesus should cause us to examine our lives, to see is there any sin that we are desiring and doing nothing about, and then to repent of that sin, to turn your back on it, and to turn your face to Jesus. The next thing, relationship improves your sight. One of the tools that Jesus uses when he teaches the disciples in the Bible is illustrations. Illustrations, they're great tools to help us understand things. He used illustrations in the form of parables to teach about the kingdom of heaven. And then if an illustration didn't work for one group of people, then he would change the illustration, teach the same thing, but teach it in a different way. But as well as revealing the truth through illustration, Jesus also improves on truth with other illustrations, sometimes putting the real life experiences of the disciples at the centre of his story. Now, we saw this last time with the real life illustration of the feeding of the 4,000. And it was through that miraculous task that Jesus shows that a relationship with him involves compassion, provision, power, inclusion. Now with a much smaller group of disciples, Jesus once again is using another real life illustration, using bread to teach them of how to improve their, to improving their sight on what a relationship with him looks like. The situation for the disciples was that as they had crossed over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee into a more desolate place, they forgot to pick up bread for their journey. So Jesus uses this as an illustration and he speaks about a key ingredient of physical bread that is also important in spiritual bread. Now often in the Bible bread is symbolic of teaching and we see that at the end of the story when the disciples realise that Jesus isn't actually talking about physical bread, he is talking about teaching. So just as the physical bread feeds the stomach, so the spiritual bread of teaching feeds the mind. In addition to that, the leaven or the yeast of the bread is often a picture of sin in the Bible. That's why the Passover meal uses unleavened bread. It's to remind the people of God that they are set apart from the world. Jesus speaks about the leaven within the bread being like the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the Jewish law. Yeast, it causes the bread to grow in size. 
something that is very little. When yeast is added, grows to something very big and different. So Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Literally, he is saying, open your eyes to the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and beware. He is saying, spiritually speaking, the issue is not the bread. Spiritually speaking, the issue is the leaven. In other words, the issue is not the law of God that is taught, but rather it's the people who are teaching it. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they turned something that was from God and was good into something completely different. So that it, what was given from God was unrecognisable. Jesus, he was opening their eyes to the false application of the law through the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When God made the world, he made it good. Then sin came into the world like the leaven to the bread. It turned it into something that looks completely different. When we live in a sinful world, that new product looks normal. It even looks appealing. I mean, let's face it, if you have the choice between an unleavened flatbread and a lovely big fluffy bloomer loaf, you choose the lovely big fluffy bloomer loaf. But bigger in this case, it's not better. Because religion, it adds unwanted ingredients into God's perfect recipe. When we are in a relationship with Jesus, however, our eyes are opened up to the leaven, to the sin of this world. Even when it's packaged up nice in the form of religion, we see the dangers of it. So I wonder as you look at your life today, where can you see the leaven? Where can you see the sin, the religion, the things that are pulling you further and further from God? Do you know, it's better to be a flatbread in the kingdom of heaven than a bloomer loaf in the world. Finally, religion saves your sight. After Jesus opened up their eyes to the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the disciples realised the dangers of following them and they walked on with Jesus. Doctors can do some amazing things with sight today, with eyes today to improve sight of people who are on, often on the edge of blindness. For some, even people who are blind altogether can have their sight restored through the wonders of modern medicine. And Jesus, he is our great spiritual physician. It is him who opens up our eyes where sin has closed them. And he saves us from eternal blindness where there's no chance of healing. You see, the question for us today is, have we opened our eyes to Jesus and his salvation? And if we have, are we looking to him to improve our sight as we battle through this ever sinful world? The gospel, it's all about the restoration of spiritual sight. God reveals Jesus to us that we might be granted sight and we may no longer work, walk in the darkness of sin. He then improves our sight as we get closer to a relationship uh, with him through Jesus. When we live in this sinful earth, this is a, not a process that will ever be perfected. We, will, we can always improve in our sight. We can always grow in our relationship with Jesus. However, the restoration of sight through the gospel will one day be perfected in the kingdom of heaven. For those who look to Jesus and reject religion, for those who look to Jesus and reject sin and trust in him and enter that relationship with him, they will one day see that perfection. The things that we know nothing about here on earth, that are good, that are as God intended, will be one day revealed to us in heaven. If we have a relationship with Jesus, then we can look forward to that day. Amen.